tonight. Filthy restaurant kitchens in Auckland. When was the last time you moved your freezer and fridge? If you don't keep those areas clean, then it's, it's going to attract the rats and the mice and the cockroaches. Illegal home kill putting the public in danger. What we see in the conditions in places like this aren't particularly pleasant to think that this is the product that you end up eating. And in Dunedin, a routine inspection upsets patrons. Yeah, I'm just telling you, don't f***ing well do it. Otherwise I'll smash that camera on you. A little bit of hostility from the um, clients of the, of the public house. In Auckland, a team from the New Zealand Food Safety Authority are mounting a two-pronged attack on a potentially dangerous food outlet. It's their job to protect consumers, ensuring food is produced according to the regulations. Our role from the New Zealand Food Safety Authority is to ensure that all food gathered is safe and fit for the purpose intended. Today's operation is the result of several months of investigating a potentially illegal home kill operation. The allegation is that the farmer is killing these animals for the purposes of selling them to members of the public and possibly butcher shops in the greater Auckland area. In New Zealand, it's legal to home kill stock for your own use, but not for human consumption by others or for commercial gain. And because there are no health controls over home butchering, it can pose a serious risk to public health. We can't guarantee that home kill meat is fit for purpose. We don't know how long it's been hanging. We don't know how it was killed. We don't know when it was killed. This officer is heading the team that's going to the dairy farm in Franklin where the illegal home kill is believed to be happening. They have obtained warrants to search the property. The idea of executing the search warrant is to um, gather evidence and seize um, possible carcasses of lambs, goats and poultry. We're going to interview the farmer and we're going to shut down his operation. But the farmer doesn't live on the property, so there's a good chance he won't be there. So a second team is sitting outside a residential address in Pakaranga. Again, they're armed with a search warrant. We're going to be searching for documents and cell phones, um, cash and anything that will support the sale of illegal meat, illegal lambs, goats and chickens. If either team finds proof that the farmer is killing stock for commercial gain, then he could be facing hefty fines and even a prison sentence. We're going to go now, go up to this address on the right and approach the front door and see what, see what happens. Both teams will serve the two separate warrants simultaneously to avoid any risk of having evidence at either location disturbed. G'day mate, how are you? Yeah. I'm with the New Zealand Food Safety Authority. The farmer's nowhere to be seen, so the team begin their search. It's the same powers as the police, very similar, OK? But we're not here to upset you, we just want to do our job. In Pakaranga, the second team are about to enter the residential address, where a white truck known to have delivered carcasses is parked right out the front. This is the man they're keen to question, the farmer. A warrant means he has no choice but to allow them into the house, and he agrees to answer a few questions. We've been looking at the activity of illegal meat sales over the last few months, and we're aware that um, there's been some lamb carcasses sold from your truck. The farmer denies the claim, telling the officer he hasn't killed anything recently. And on the rare occasion that he does, it's only for friends. Mounting evidence at the farm, however, would suggest this isn't the case. We've got 20 live lambs around here and one carcass in here. There's little doubt that stock are being slaughtered here, but they've yet to find any evidence that he's supplying and selling the meat to other people. Meanwhile in Dunedin, Environmental Health Officer Wayne Boss is following up on a potential rodent infestation at a central city pub. 
I've received a call from one of our other environmental health officers who needs some support at a, a premises where the conditions are found to be poor and uh, possible infestation problem. Wayne's been advised that the pub's kitchen is the main problem area, and sure enough... We just stepped into the kitchen. There's a real, real strong odour. Experienced inspectors like Wayne rely on smell as a first warning of problems that aren't visually obvious. Oh. Well, right. Got a, a saucer here. You know, <laughs> labelled up boys are ready to kill that bait, but there's, there's none on it. It's just spread round all of the sort of three, four metre area of the kitchen. You do often see that when there's rodent activity, you do see that they'll start sort of grabbing mouthfuls of the bait, traipsing it around, kicking it off the dishes, things like that. You can't have a food kitchen with poison spread around as well. That's not a good idea. Using enclosed bait stations would reduce the chance of dangerous poison being spread across the kitchen floor. Could be that there's been some vermin that have picked up the bait and what they'll tend to go is find an a nook or a cranny and an underneath floorboards and, and die. And there's a real smell as though there might be actually some rotting carcasses in it. It really does smell. Vermin are carriers of numerous dangerous diseases and microorganisms and can contaminate surfaces with their hair, faecal droppings, urine, saliva, body parts and general filth. It's absolutely blindingly obvious to us that this premises has got fairly active infestation problem. Vermin in a place where food and refreshments are served is a serious public health risk, leaving Wayne with no option but to take it up with the operator. Back with Wayne in Dunedin, where he and another officer have uncovered a potential vermin infestation at a central city pub. I've got some real worries and concerns with your premises, right? When you step into that kitchen, there's a real strong odour. Could be decaying bodies. Have you noticed that smell? No. The thing no. is, no, that kitchen never gets used. We don't, no, I never use it. No one ever uses the kitchen apart from me, just to cook my own meals. So, I mean, it's not, it's not actually used. The kitchen, that's why it's bloody like that, because it's never used. Well, it is a worry to you, right? The reason being is that it's open onto the rest of the premises. So if you've got vermin there, you've got vermin that can walk through the rest of your premises, right? Vermin aren't acceptable in any part of the premises, whether the kitchen is used or not. You've explained to me you don't use the kitchen. No, We're going to formally close that kitchen. A D-grade closes the kitchen until the problems are rectified. The only part of the premises we're going to permit to be open still is this bar. A separate C-grade allocated to the bar means it can remain open, which you'd expect the locals to be happy about. I'm just telling you, don't well do it, otherwise I'll smash that camera on Right, well that was an interesting job with um, a little bit of hostility from the um, clients of the, of the public house. Maybe they've had a bit to drink, but um, sometimes I find it, it an interesting response from members of the public who seem to be getting a bit upset. Generally the work that we're doing is just for the public's benefit, that we're making sure they're not eating in poor establishments and protecting the public health and sometimes you do get a little bit of hostility like that, so um, interesting, part of the job. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Auckland's North Shore, Environmental Health Officer Brett Taylor is heading out for an annual grading inspection. Today, he is visiting a sushi restaurant that carries a coveted grade A, but in contrast, it also carries a history of problems. The premises has had a bit of a shady past, uh, fluctuating between C's, B's and A's. Previous issues have revolved around substandard cleaning, but Brett hopes that they have been able to maintain the excellent safety practices that earned them a high grade last year. Hi there. Hello. Hello. From Walshaw City Council. Because of a language barrier, Brett uses a translator to ensure the operators understand every aspect of the inspection. So what I need to do is just check yeah. through the kitchen. Yeah. This place was immaculate a year ago, but today the kitchen's a mess. There are food spills and scraps everywhere, which are probably the reason for all the flies. What are you doing for pest control? For flies, cockroaches, rats and mice. 
Brett learns that the operator is trying to manage the flies herself. So you're just doing it yourself? Yeah, yeah. Every day, you know, all hago. Tomorrow, okay. Okay. Slip back on that though. You'll probably find you'll get an infestation. And if you get an infestation, then you're going to need a contractor. Yeah. Regular visits by a pest control contractor would go a long way towards getting rid of the flies, but they also need to lift their cleaning standards. How often do you clean up? Do they clean up on top here? Yes, to show. Uh, uh, within, uh, within one, oh. one week? Once a week? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From the dirt and grime Brett can see, cleaning doesn't look like a weekly occurrence, let alone a daily one as it should be. When was the last time you moved your freezer and when fridge? Every Saturday. Yeah. Every Saturday? Yeah. yeah. Rotten food under equipment suggests their historic cleaning problems are back, but will they lose their A grade? Back in Franklin, the New Zealand food safety team search a farm to investigate a suspected illegal home kill operation. And there's flies on the windowsills here. They can lay their eggs in there for we get maggots. We don't know how long this meat's going to sit here before someone comes and buys it. It may sit there for a day, we don't know, two days. The storage of the carcass in an area open to fly suggests this operator isn't too concerned about health risks, and that's borne out by a find in a neighbouring shed. Well, that's warm too. I'd say it's slaughtered in the last couple of hours, really. It's warm to the touch and the gut, anyway. The farmer claimed nothing has been slaughtered for months, but this is clear evidence to the contrary. Body's gone, but, I mean, there's no sign in here that it was slaughtered here, so it's probably done over in that cow shed, which is uh, pretty unhygienic in terms of milk production. We've got blood down here indicating that something has been killed or cut down here. If we go up the concrete, there's more blood down here. We've got chains, rope. We've got knives for slaughtering, loppers for cutting hocks off, and a machete for perhaps cutting the neck off. So it's been slaughtered here and then hosed off down the concrete and down into the paddock. And from there, possibly been taken in where it's been hung in the other room. Remember, this farm is a legitimate dairy operation, which means it has to comply with certain health regulations. This is a milking shed, it's not a slaughterhouse. And uh, the, the two don't mix. And the meat's hanging in a room that has the door open. There's at least six dogs in the area. We know at the moment that the dogs have been into another part of the farm and dragged out goat carcasses and gut packs. But who's to know that they haven't been nibbling on this lamb that is possibly subsequently going to be sold to a butcher shop in Auckland who's then going to sell it onto a restaurant and then the end consumer is going to be eating a piece of lamb for dinner that a dog has been chewing on. So that's why we're here. Animal product intended to be traded for consumption in New Zealand must undergo processing and premises that operate risk management programs which identify, control, manage and eliminate dangerous risks and ensure the product is fit for its intended purpose, whether as human or animal food. At the residential address in Pakaranga, the farmer is now saying he kills the animals for his own dog tucker, but that's not how it looks to the team at the farm. If you look up here, we've got an order being made, written on the whiteboard, an order for Sunday for a person with his phone number, ordered two male goats, priced at 80 to $90 each. The whiteboard is the clearest evidence yet that orders are being taken, and money is changing hands, which the farmer has already denied once. Have you sold any goats? He still insists the meat is for friends, the dogs and his workers. Back on Auckland's North Shore. A restaurant with an A grade but with a history of cleaning problems is back to its bad old ways, coming up well below par on inspection. Yeah. So you're cleaning under but you don't yeah. move the machine? Yeah. Every time by hand. By hand, you, yeah. get, you reach yeah. under. Yeah. So you, you don't pull the machine out. 
Brett found remnants of rotten food and filth under the equipment, which is a worry because it's a big attraction for nasty pests. Yeah. If you don't keep those areas clean, then it's, yeah, okay. it's going to attract the rats and the mice and the okay, okay. Oh, no problem. Okay. It was a problem for Brett, and with the cleaning not up to scratch, his assessment had the restaurant downgraded to a B. And he'll be keeping a close eye to make sure the standards don't fall any further between now and the next inspection. Back with a New Zealand food safety investigation, and unexpected guests at the farm are adding to the team's suspicions. And so far, we've established that Ravinda has arrived to source some milk. Milk. Some milk. milk. Oh. The Just a so, one bottle. Yeah. So you specifically want unpasteurised milk? Is, yeah. that, is that the reason? Yeah. yeah. And you've come from Smells Road to here yeah. to get three litres of milk. That's expensive milk. Over an hour's drive does seem like an excessive trip for only one bottle of unpasteurised milk. Can we have a look in your boot, please? What's the bags for? Well, the, bags, the bags I went to the... Before last yeah. week, I went to pick a part to get some parts, so I left the plastic there. Did you come here to pick up some lambs? No. Have you picked up lambs previously? No. Anything else from here? No. Just the milk. Just the milk. But no sooner does one visitor vanish and another arrives. And like the previous driver with plastic bags in the boot, he has something in the back of his van suitable for transporting meat, an empty box. He claims to be visiting a friend, but he can't even remember his friend's name. You're not here to buy any sheep or goats, are you? No, no. You sure about that? Is he selling them? Yes, he is. Oh, I don't know. No, if you've come here today to buy home-killed lambs, goats, trucks or any other poultry, if that was your intention today, there is no point in you coming back because this farm is now shut down in regard to the sale of home kill food. OK, well, if it's that's the case, here. then that's fine. Personally, I don't think that's the case. But it's not unusual for home kill operators to supply meat to restaurants and butchers, and this could have been a pickup. No parcels in the van, empty cardboard box. How big is the cardboard box? Big enough. Big enough for a lamb? Oh, yeah. There's also a house on the farm which the team now start to search. We were just going through all his records and documents and we're basically looking for phone numbers relating to um, butcher shops or orders made from members of the public with phone numbers, orders, um, things like the amount of goats or lambs or chickens that they're after, the price they're going to pay for them, when they're going to be delivered. Hopefully we'll find all that here because all his records are kept on the kitchen table. Let's see, he bought 20, 31 sheep on the 20th of this month. Four, seven, eight, nine, 14 ewes and rams. Another bunch of ewes on the 20th of last month. 58 lambs then. 58? 58 lambs on the 20th. This number is nothing out of the ordinary for a beef and sheep farmer. But remember, this is a dairy farm. When you're milking 170 cattle a day, twice a day, You'd have to say that farming sheep would be the least of your worries. Back at the house in Pakaranga, the officer is still pushing for more details from the farmer. Can you level with me? Have you sold to any butcher shops in Auckland? Finally, the farmer admits to some involvement in sales. And the questioning concludes so the officer can search for other evidence. First stop, the white truck parked out the front, known to have been used for deliveries. A little bit of, little bit of discussion, as you can probably uh, tell, but it's okay, it's fine. Here's some goat carcasses, there's four there. Which he says is dog tucker. I have reason to believe otherwise, of course. As both teams wrap up this leg of their investigation... Done. They head back to a central meeting point to closely examine the evidence. The officers are particularly interested in the condition of the four carcasses. The offal has been put into bags. We've been advised by the farmer that he's keeping this for dog tucker, but 
I don't think the dogs know how to open the bags to get the kidneys out and the liver. Again, same thing. Um, we've got heart, liver and kidneys there. And thrown in for good measure, a disturbing find of faeces. Good way to end up with a dose of food poisoning. The gut pack has perhaps broken open and it's left faecal matter and stomach contents on the carcass of the goat. That's got faecal pellets in there as well. And again, this has come out of a truck that's been sitting in a residential driveway for at least a night. We don't know how long this meat has been in the back of that truck. I wouldn't even give it to my dogs. If it's not good enough for dogs, it's certainly not fit for human consumption. Over the last few years, there's been a good number of prosecutions for sale of non-complying product, and the level of fines has been increasing each time that we put somebody before the court. So the whole idea of it is to make a deterrent, really. And that's exactly what's been happening. So we've been quite pleased, really. After several months of investigation, it's been a successful day for the New Zealand food safety team. They've collected enough evidence to mount a strong case against this home kill operator. At the end of the day, it's... Uh, the product's meant to be fit for its intended purpose and what we see in the conditions in places like this aren't particularly pleasant to think that this is the product that you end up eating. Simple as that, really. The overwhelming evidence collected at this investigation did point to a legal activity that was putting the health of consumers at serious risk. The New Zealand Food Safety Authority issued the farmer with a notice of direction and had his unlawful operation immediately shut down.